There's a crisis in the Eurozone, everyone knows that, and if you read most newspapers you'd think there's only two possible solutions. One is that the Euro survives and continues to be used by the 17 countries which have it as their currency, and the other possible outcome is that there's some sort of breakup, and some of the countries in the Eurozone end up going back to using their own national currencies. Now there is perhaps a third solution. It's an idea that's been mooted by Philip Booth, the director of the Institute of Economic Affairs, once Margaret Thatcher's favourite think tank. He also now works at CAS as one of our professors. And Philip Booth is here to tell me all about it. So, Philip, what is the third option? Well, my thinking is this, that um, the, the, the euro has um, actually brought a lot of benefits um, to, to countries which previously had a high inflation. But the, the problem is that many of those countries have extremely high levels of unemployment and very rigid labour markets. And when they are um, subjected to economic shocks, the economies are not really able to respond. Now, the best solution to that is for those countries to completely liberalise their labour markets and product markets. But if that isn't going to happen, then um, it could be argued that those countries would be um, better off if they had their own national currencies or another currency which wasn't necessarily the euro. Now, given the um, constitutional constraints which prevents a country from leaving the European Union unless it leaves the euro, my, my suggestion is, is quite simple, and that is that the euro remains legal tender in all current eurozone uh, countries, but if those countries wish to adopt other currencies as legal tender, could be private currencies, the dollar, or sterling, or, the, or, or go back to producing their own national currencies again, um, they could also be legal tender within those countries. That would help resolve some of the problems within the eurozone, but by no means it, would it be a panacea. So just explain to me this idea of running two currencies alongside, so the euro continues to be common currency, mm -hmm. but also perhaps going back to your own national currency. Mm. What are the advantages of doing that? Well, what the, the main problem within many um, Eurozone countries that have high rates of unemployment is that um, wage rates are very inflexible and it's very difficult to reduce nominal wages um, denominated in, in, in Euro terms. If it was possible to... Um, uh, uh, for countries to reintroduce their own national cu currencies and wage contracts were negotiated in those currencies. If those, cur if those countries were subjected to an economic shock and the value of their currencies fell, then that would be a way of adjusting wage levels downwards, real wage levels downwards, um, without actually adjusting nominal wages downwards. It's the old problem which Keynes talked about in the 1930s, the difficulty of uh, coping with a depression um, when you've got very rigid wage levels. And it would presumably also give those governments that went down that road the opportunity of printing more money to get themselves out of their hole. Well, that's um, one possible danger, certainly, because it, although it, it, it may seem like an opportunity, it is also a significant danger. One of the reasons why the euro was introduced was because so many countries had been irresponsible in their conduct of monetary policy. But as long as the uh, euro, euro remains a legal tender currency uh, within those countries, uh, businesses, individuals and so on can carry on using the euro if they wish to do so. So the um, governments would have to be um, fairly... Uh, responsible in the way they manage uh, their currencies if they reintroduced um, the, uh, um, national currencies. The other point which is extremely important to recognise is that uh, the debt which these countries are already saddled with, which is uh, huge and, and, and crippling, would not be um, uh, removed simply by those countries uh, reintroducing their own national currencies. That debt is denominated in euros, it will remain denominated in euros. So the um, dismantling of the eurozone as a single currency zone uh, doesn't resolve in any way the, um, the, the debt problem of uh, so many of the eurozone countries. That needs a different solution. Of course, a lot of the countries that might find your suggestion attractive are the currencies which in the past, before the adoption of the euro, were the ones that tended to resort to the printing press. Absolutely. And um, as I say, that is a danger, but one... Um, uh, an important aspect of uh, this proposal is that the euro would remain a legal tender currency all throughout the current uh, eurozone and indeed any other countries could adopt it as a legal tender currency too. So uh, assuming the euro remains a reasonably sound um, currency, uh, the citizens of that 
country, if the uh, governments did resort to the printing press, uh, could always um, uh, carry on writing uh, contracts uh, in, in, in Europe. Things become much more transparent too, uh, because you can see what your government's up to. Uh, ab absolutely. And the, one of the um, real problems, of course, in the 1970s, when the British government was printing uh, money as if it was going out of fashion, was that we had exchange contrails, very strict exchange contrails, so um, citizens, investors and, and businesses and so on couldn't use any currency other than sterling. So there was no uh, discipline on the government uh, to um, uh, not create inflation. Professor Philip Booth of the Institute of Economic Affairs and Professor at Cass Business School, thank you very much. Thank you.